So I I assume you're believers. Yes, sir. Okay. So what do you propose we do? See, you know, a lot of people ask me that. Okay. I mean, I could tell you things that I do, mm -hmm. but. We're not here to say, you know, if you do this, and you do this, and you do this, then that's good with God. See, what happens is, if you feel, okay, and after praying that you're apathetic towards the plight of the unborn, God will tell you what to do. See, you know, I used to be like a lot of Christians years ago. I was on staff at a church, okay, I was pro-life. I voted, gave, filled my baby bottles, and I was good. But then God opened my eyes to the fact that, do I really believe that these children are the same as those children? That if somebody was going to kill these children, it's the same as killing those children in the eyes of God? And the answer was no. I was like, how most people are who are pro-life or Christians they're ageists. They agree, you know, God's word says all children are a gift of God. You know, life begins at conception. All children are a blessing. But do we actually believe it? Okay. And I realized <laughs> I don't. Because if I was acting like the children that are being murdered at the rate of 3,000 a day, the same as if I was acting, if they were killing these kids every day, what would my response be? And, and it wouldn't be filling a baby bottle. It wouldn't be um, giving a thumbs up to you as I drive by and see you with your sign. It would be, oh God, forgive me. And, and that's what happened. I, I repented of my apathy and I turned. Okay? Now am I still repenting? I'm, I'm not doing enough. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do enough but I repented of my apathy. And then God showed me what to do. Be a voice for the voiceless. Defend those being led to the slaughter. Okay? I became an abolitionist. I stopped being pro-life because pro-lifers regulate abortion and treat it as health care. Do you know... Do you live in Texas? Yes. Okay. Do you know in Texas it's illegal to kill your unborn child? is already on the books as murder. But the pro-life laws said uh, it's murder unless you're a woman, and unless you do it after 20 weeks, and unless you don't have an abortionist do it, okay? That's what made abortion legal in this country. The Supreme Court can't make rules, can't make laws. That's, you know, that's basic government. What has made it is that we've now passed laws that say, if you do this and this and this, you have an ultrasound, if you do this, if you have kind you wait 72 hours, then you can kill your child. Okay? And we're saying, according to Scripture, as Christians, we do not back iniquitous, iniquitous decrees. We do not support iniquitous decrees. Now, if they pass a 20-week bill, will that be a good thing? Well, you know, I mean, 20 weeks, you know, 98.7% of all abortions are before 20 weeks. And even on the 20-week bill that they're trying to pass now, there's exceptions. Life of the mother, rape, incest. So basically, it means nothing. And that's why we've been in this Holocaust for 45 years, and we've gotten over 60 million babies dead. And that's just the ones we count. You see, because states like Florida and Texas, I mean, uh, Florida and New York and California, they don't submit their numbers. The biggest killing states, they don't submit their numbers. It's always voluntary. And all they submit are the numbers, the states that do submit the numbers that are killed surgically. Not the ones that are killed with RU486. Not the ones that are killed when you go down to Walgreens or Walmart or Target and buy the Plan B pill. So that number is way, way higher. So, you know, you ask me, well, what can I do? First thing is, and as I was talking to a pastor earlier, is search your heart. And, and, and ask yourself, if, if they passed a law that said the, the children in this church are going to be murdered on Monday, would I, my response to that be the same as the response to these children being murdered? 
If your answer is yes, then you, you got to ask, what's that response? Okay? And if it's no, then you definitely have to check yourself. Because now, as we're saying, we're, you're heading into the area that you're, you don't really believe the children in the womb are worth as much as God's word says they are. In Texas here, we already got a resolution passed onto the Republican uh, platform. Mm -hmm. The number one plank in the Republican platform is the abolition of abortion. Right. We had HB 948 here in Texas. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Okay. See, most people aren't because the church... But HB 948 was killed by the right to life and the pro-life movement. If that bill went through session, abortion would have been illegal already in Texas. It would have happened in September. Where's the church? When we had this big rally in Austin to support the representatives that were bringing forth this bill, less than a thousand Christians showed up in a state with over 70,000 pastors in it. 70,000 pastors. Now we're not talking about the people they flock on, in their flock. It wasn't about just the pastors, over 70,000. How can this be? If we say, if we say we are pro-life, we are for life, what does it look like? And that's what I ask people all the time. What exactly does your Christianity look like in a culture that murders over, I'll take that, <laughs> over, six, over, over 60 million babies? And I know when I answered that, it broke me. It broke me. And like I said, do I do enough? <sighs> but I have to keep repenting and keep, well, if I could do this, I'll do this. If I could do this, I'll do this. You know, we, you know people want to say, well, what do you do? I mean, I do, I do lots of stuff. I travel around the country, going to different places and visiting different abolitionist societies. Because like I said, we're not pro-life, we're abolitionists. Um, I, I, we stand out at the high school every day, Monday through Friday, every morning. And we speak to these kids. We call it Project Frontlines because we want to get them before they get to the clinics. Have you ever stood out in front of a clinic? Okay, when you, get to, when you stand out in front of a clinic, you see, and number one, these women aren't victims. They're cold-blooded murderers, okay? When they get there, their hearts are already so hardened to comfort themselves in the fact that they're going to kill their child. Mm -hmm. They've already received comfort from their parents, from their families, from their boyfriends, from their girlfriends, and in a lot of cases from their pastors. So God will forgive you. They already went, they scheduled it. They waited the 72 hours. They had their ultrasound. They went to the bank got the money they arranged to have somebody drive them mm -hmm. so that by the time they get to the clinic they're ready to kill and that's why we call it the, uh, the, the final lines and that's why we call going to the high schools the front lines you know how many kids write us you know at the school that the schools hate us being there parents hate us being there and a lot of the kids act tough but then we get right we get messages on our Facebook page thank you for being there I was gonna kill my child. Thank you. You hear it all the time, and that's you know. You ask, what do I do? You know, we go, we go, we preach out on the streets. We stand out on the corners. We stand in front of the mills. We, there's a million things you could do, but the first thing that has to be done is we check our heart. And wow, <laughs> they're killing over three thousand babies a day. And this is what we think is important. One of those signs over there says, rethink your priorities. When God, when we stand before God, is God going to say, how many conferences did you go to? Unfortunately, I mean, it's good to go to conferences. Okay, I got a couple of friends here that are going to this conference. Okay. But if we are not, following God's word and God's will in the weightier matters of the law. You know, there's lots of injustices. There's homeless people. But is there anything more urgent 
than the fact that 3, 000, over 3,000 of God's image bearers are going to be murdered today. While we're standing here right now, every minute, two of them are going to be murdered. Is there anything more urgent? Yes, when we speak to these people, we, we give them the gospel. Because if I go there with humanistic truth, I'm no better than, you know, anybody else who's just going to stand there and say, oh, don't kill your baby. And this is the reasons why. We give them the Bible. And when I preach out at the, the clinics, I preach a, a good 45-minute message. Because it is only the gospel that will change the heart. I can't change your heart. He can't change your heart. You can't change their heart. Only the gospel can change their heart. It's only the gospel and the word of God that will bring them to repentance. I could try and reason with them all I want, but that's not going to change their mind. And even if it does, it changes their mind for this baby. And then after they have this baby, they get pregnant again and they're back in the same spot. You see, if God changes your heart, then killing your child is something you can't even fathom. But unfortunately, the statistics bear out, even by Planned Parenthood, their own statistics, that over 60% of the people that kill their children are church-going, Bible-believing Christians. This ought not to be so. And, I, and, I, and like I said, I stood out, I stopped standing out daily at the clinics last year when I moved to Texas because I wanted to focus more on other stuff, other things to do, standing out at the schools, doing all kind of other stuff. But I stood out at these clinics for three years, every day. And when you stand out there, you realize, number one, everybody's a Christian. Yes, I am. It's called accountability, sir. See, I can't... I just want to know if he knew about it. No, I didn't. Well, Texas is a one-party consent state, okay? But Still, integrity of the person. Why is... Do you have something... Do you have something... Well, he didn't know. That's why I... Well, I'm wearing a camera and the numbers are going. That's why I asked. But he didn't know. And it was right yeah, there. I didn't yeah. notice. But, but yeah, it's, it's called accountability because, like... You could say, oh, this guy said all this stuff about me. And they do it all the time. Yeah. But it would be nice if you say, listen, I'm videotaping. Well, we, we think people realize, since I'm wearing a camera square on my chest and the numbers are rolling. You didn't notice. Yeah, I didn't notice. Oh. That's okay. But it, that's how we keep ourselves accountable. And it's also for our protection. Okay. Because I have been assaulted many times. Um, I don't even remember what we were talking about right then. Um, well, I, I was talking about how I stood out at, at the clinic for every day, for three, over three and a half years. And it was like, everybody's a Christian. And God's going to forgive everybody. And yes, God forgives a repentant heart. But a prideful, boastful heart, a heart that... Uh, uses God's word and forgiveness and mercy as a license to sin against him, those he doesn't know, those he doesn't hear. You know, we're talking about Hebrews um, and, and Romans, Paul, okay? Do we sin so that my grace may abound? No. Um, if you're about to punch me and I tell you, uh, you know, you shouldn't do that, the biblical reasons why, in a Christian, that should pierce your heart. In someone who's uh, got a rebellious, prideful heart, self-righteous heart, you'll just punch me and you'll ask for forgiveness later. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you see a lot of out at these clinics. I mean, I've been assaulted many times, spit on, cursed at. But what's worse than standing out, and this is very sad to say, what's worse than standing out at clinics is standing out at churches. Because now you're dealing with, we're trying to wake up the church to the Holocaust, mm -hmm. and you're dealing with people that are good, who think they're good, who have nothing to repent about. And I know for a fact, like I said, I was on staff at the church. I was an associate pastor. And I know. And as soon as I started talking about this stuff, well, you know, don't talk about that around here. 
Well, I, I cannot pretend to speak for others, nor do I want to. Because when you start speaking for, uh, for others, you're always going to say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know what's in people's hearts. But, you know, I, I look at these type of events as learning to do. Um, changing hearts so that these kinds of things will happen less and less until there's no more of this type of attitude. I think what happens in many situations with this is that it's sort of out of sight, out of mind. Because exactly. You, say, <laughs> you know, if somebody was going to come and kill our children, that would be right there in the open. But with this, it's like, you know, well, it happens down the street in some facility where you don't see like it. Behind a wall. About it. And so, you know, a lot of times you just don't think about it. And because you don't think about it, you just don't see the need to do anything about it. I, um, yeah, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, what is it, AATX, Abolish Abortion in Texas, and, yeah. and all of that. That's, and I think it, that's and his I get, pamphlet right here, yeah. AATX. And so I, I get their messages, and, and I try to raise the alarm to a certain extent. I know that, you know, my little corner of the world, maybe 20, 30 people know about it, but, you know, you, you can't do anything just because what you do is so little. Uh, hopefully, uh, 20 or 30 people that I have some sort of influence over will in Here, turn, Sterling. influence, you know, 20 or 30 and for themselves and, and so on. Um, and you know, it's something that to repent about every day. Uh, right. And, and, know, and our nation and, is is more and more becoming more and more, more callous. More and more used to the blood and um, death. The blood, yeah, and the death, and and it's kind of like, I mean, you see it in, in the way that society is, is more and more uh, becoming uh, hardened against sin. You talk about the ladies that come to the abortion clinics and they're determined that they're going to kill because their heart has been hardened to the extent that. Right, but as Christians, do we say, well, that's society, and oh, well, no, it's a no, terrible I, thing. I, I, right, we're salt and light. We're supposed to be salt and light. And that's why I say, you know, uh, to me, it's not either or. It's not go to a conference or be salt and light. It's go to a conference and be salt and light. You know, make sure that what you're learning is leading you somewhere. You know, right. I try to teach my children, don't just go to church because, well, I went to church yesterday, and, you know, that's great. What is it for? What did you learn so that you can apply it to your life and so that you can teach it to other people, to your children, to your friends, to your neighbors, etc. Uh, because as you say, only the Spirit of God can change hearts. And so, uh, you know, I think it's, I mean, some people say that you know, this doesn't work or this is not good. But again, even if five or ten of us think about it a little more, well then something good came of it. Um, and, you know, I don't know what your um, beliefs are outside of the fact that you're telling me that you're a believer in God and so on and so forth. But, you know, I, I do think that it's, it's a service, you know, it's something that God uses that, uh, at least in my case, it's, it helps me become more introspective uh, and more reflective of what it is that I am all about. No, well, you know, and, and, and what we're trying to, and that's what we ask people, what does Christianity look like mm -hmm. in a culture that murders? And I asked these two guys the other night, I was like, that apartment building right there, if that apartment building was fully engulfed in flames and the top floor were kids screaming, help me, help me, yeah. would we say, I'm, you know, conference is starting, right? right? Or would we run to their rescue if somebody was beating on these little kids here or trying to rape these kids would we say god loves you i'll pray for you mm -hmm. or would we interpose so you're you, you're on aa texas you, so you're kind of familiar with a lot of the stuff i'm saying see most of the people that we talk to this is greek this is greek this is oh abortion oh well, we have two people in our church that do that if we have a good church Okay, and, and God's commandment, you know, they, the, they asked Jesus, the, the ruler asked Jesus, you know, what is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And in this is summed up all the law and the prophets. Okay? And seeking to be a wise guy, he said, well, who's my neighbor? And that's when he went into the parable. 
of the Good Samaritan. Okay, but unfortunately, and I, I know this, you know, because I used to be part of it. You, you listen to these, like, yeah, yeah, that guy should listen to that. That that guy should listen to it. But me, I'm good. <laughs> and I, and I know, I God opened my eyes to the fact that they're killing people, and I'm, I'm, you know, doing yeah. nothing. And, and I mean, but again, I don't want to speak for other people, but. Don't judge them too harshly, because I know for myself, until recently, like you mentioned, it would have all been Greek to me. I mean, I had a, a general amorphous idea of abortion and, and all that was going on there. Not all. Let me backtrack, because I can't pretend to say everything that goes on. But I had a general idea, okay? But, you know, it was sort of like on the side of the mind again. And so most of, most of us, I think, at one time or another, that's how we are. Well, that's and the normal pro-life person. You know, and eventually, I think, as you mentioned, the Spirit of God not only is the only one that can change the non-believer's heart, is the only one that can change our heart. Mm -hmm. And Sanctification. begin to bring that, to, exactly. And so, you know, there's a lot of people that, it's not that they don't want to think about it, it's that it just doesn't occupy their thinking because it's, again, out of sight, out of mind. But hopefully, the day will come when, you know, the Spirit will lead them to that understand to realize that you know right. there's more to christianity than but this. the biblical what's the biblical response is the biblical response i mean have i been mean to you no. have, have i been confrontational and try to tell you what a rotten person you are no so, right i mean i i would consider you a brother okay but what is the response the response ignore them throw that stuff out mm -hmm. can we use your bathroom no would you, if I was a Muslim or if I was a Buddhist, would you let me use your bathroom? Yeah, you, you could use the bathroom, but not you. This is how we treat Christians. And if you actually think I'm that lost, how come at an evangelism conference, you're not all out here trying to evangelize me? Right? It's, it's, that is what, when you point out something to people who don't want to see what's being pointed out, that's usually the response, well, you know, and, and that's what any, that's what any, you know, if I, if I you know, uh, you shouldn't be watching porn. And usually, you know, your first response will be a defensive response. And then if the spirit's in you, the spirit will be like, you know, you idiot. That was a stupid response. And, and you'll, that, that's, that's the normal response at any time. It's yeah. like, uh, it happens in the heat of the moment, and then afterwards you realize... Yeah. Ah, did so I exalt Christ there? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and so, and, and you know, as far as the evangelism is concerned, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. You know, I can only believe that you're a believer because you're telling me that you're a believer. So I hope you really are a believer and that you're, uh, you know, following the Christ and submitting to Him. Um, but, you know, I, I just... All I have to say is, yes, I know, you know, and they told us last night about the AHA folks. I'm trying to remember what the acronym was. And, um, but... You stay away from us bad guys. Well, no, I mean, because, <laughs> look, just like you're talking about the image bearer, you're an image bearer, he's an image bearer. We all are image bearers. Mm -hmm. So we all deserve each other's compassion, each other's time. You know, I can't go over there, over somewhere to somebody's house as an unbeliever, talk to them about the greatness of the gospel, uh, and not talk to you or give you the, the time of day, you know, because how is that congruous? That, mm -hmm. that doesn't work, you know, whether you're a believer or not. Uh, so that's my take on it. But again, I don't want to judge other people because that's not my right, place. Right, but for them, so, for them to refuse to let little children use the bathroom? Yeah. Are you, do you live local or? No, I'm from San Antonio. Oh, so you're a good distance away. Yeah. Yeah, because we do church every Sunday night. Oh, okay. You know, we do, we have a home church, Right. you know, a um, couple of uh, guys are ordained ministers. I'm an ordained minister. Um, do you have like a card or something that? Well, we're the Abolition Society of Little No, but Elm. I mean for your local congregation, so that when we're up here again, maybe we can. No, we. Well, what we do is we uh, 
with the Abolition Society of Little Elm, we post an event every weekend with where we, whether it's at my house or at my brother's house. So you or, posted here, you mean? On Facebook. Okay. We post okay. an event. So if you um, like our page, then you'll get notified of our events. Okay. And uh, if you're on Facebook, uh, my name is Matt Tringale, Matthew Tringali, and that's Todd Bullis. If you like me, you know we can move, you know, onto our invitation list. But you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that you know we we have church every Sunday night. We don't do church like this. We don't believe in. Uh, this kind of church we believe in a home-based church okay but it's not a home-based church where we uh you know so you meet in a home yeah okay yeah well my home or his often, home but you know next time we come we're leaving tomorrow afternoon so we won't be able to to join you but uh you know if we come back my name is this. matt by the way mike mike yes hey man Pleasure. i really appreciate you stopping and speaking oh, to me. thank you it was uh, it was good to, to talk to you. Likewise. And uh, I, I I do pray that you know, because uh, we know we're being slandered. <laughs> that you know you know we're not mean, yeah you know You're yelling not at anyway. people. I don't know about the others. Well, have you seen <laughs> anybody <laughs> yelling at anybody? No, no. Uh, you know, I have to be uh, honest, you know I we, we're very focused on truth. I mean that's why we record everything. Because, uh, like, like last night, I spoke to these two guys, mm -hmm. okay, and then today they posted, they posted that I said all these things and that abortion mill ministry isn't important. And it's just lies. It's mm -hmm. just lies. I'm like whoa, 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 it's like you know, it's it's sad, but that's why we record everything so that you know this is what happened. It's the live, it's the, the world we live in. Of course, and unfortunately, you know that's the way it has to be. Yeah. Well, but again. God bless you. you. And anytime you're up, man, we'd love to love to fellowship with you. Thank you.